G'day, welcome to another episode of Get Coached. Great to have everybody along again, and I am Coach Kef. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to have a little bit of a chat around training zones, so how you can introduce them into your training, what benefit they're going to be, and of course, what is a training zone, which is a question a lot of newer athletes to running, riding, swimming, multi-sport ask, because they sort of get these things thrown at them and just sort of get told what to do but uh, we're going to try and clarify a bit of that how you can introduce them to your training and how that will definitely benefit you if you do do it properly so what is a training zone there's a the very very technical version which is uh, a rate of effort a percentage of effort against a threshold so depending on what you're doing whether it's swim riding or running your threshold is your generally based on your lactate threshold so what your maximum rate of work is and your ability to remove lactate (laughs) and or aerobic so your ability to maintain oxygenated uh, work for a set period of time uh, is probably the the most non-technical technical descriptions i can come up with uh training zones um can be generally uh, a rate of perceived effort can be a training zone so you know easy moderate medium hard really hard way too hard that is a training zone essentially it's not highly accurate um, most people's perception of effort is poor whether they're going that they're actually working harder than what they think they are and or they're working a lot easier than what they should be in the harder sessions when you use a tested training zone it really really helps you in really dialing in those sessions they ensure that your easy sessions are conducted at an effort that is easy for you and not for someone else and also making sure that you hit those really hard sessions so you know if you've got a hard run to do and you need to hit that hit a certain number sometimes our rpe depending on conditions uh, how we're feeling we'll have a feeling we're working harder than what we what we actually are and that's a whole nother whole nother episode talking about that but um essentially training zone designed to help you nail your training train at the right effort at the right time so that when you're easy is meant to be easy so recovering your endurance work that's what you're doing and when your hard is hard you're working at that hard hard effort so how do you calculate a training zone look there's a few different ways there's threshold tests there's step tests um, and a few different ways the simplest ways of, of calculating uh, most of your training zones is work on a on around about a 20 to 30 minute hard effort whether it's um, a functional threshold power or th- functional threshold heart rate test in riding or a functional heart rate test in running or a pace based test there is now power with running as well so similar kind of thing and a lot of the companies that produce power meters for running now have their own tests and how they believe it, it works best so so what do we do so for most of our team who are swimming riding or running we'll give them uh, a 20 minute run test or a 5k go down do your local park run or your local 5k race we take your average heart rate from that to give you your threshold heart rate and then we also take your average pace to give you your threshold pace now i'll move on to this a little bit later but there are different ways of calculating your zones from that with riding same thing we do a functional threshold power test it's a 20 minute all out effort same with um, with the heart rate, we take that average. But with, with power for a bike, most calculations are based on an hour. So we'll multiply, well, sorry, we'll take 90 to 95% of your power from a power test as your average. And then we'll use that as your, as your threshold. Now, the more experienced the rider for a FTP test, the closer you can get to 95, the less experienced the rider, the closer you'll go to 90%. And as a coach, we can sort of work that out from how they hit certain numbers at certain times. Calculating. Now, this is the fun bit. So there's a range of different zones and there's a few different versions of calculating a training zone with two of the most common in endurance sports being the Dr. Andy Coggan method or Joe Friel's method. Both are fairly similar but slightly different. But as a general rule, you know, your endurance work is at 65 to 75% of that threshold pace, power, heart rate, effort. Uh, in recovery is lower than that and easier than that. And then we go sort of, depending on the method, again, you go to tempo, lactate threshold or threshold, VO2 max, uh, neuromuscular power, 
and so on and so forth. Yep, lots of big words, lots of stuff that your probably brain's exploding, and <laughs> I can understand that. That's for sure. But calculating your calculating your um, your training zones using one of these methods is a great place to start. There's a few different ones. We use a slightly different method uh, to those two, but these are the two most common, easily found, and there's lots of calculators out there on the net that you can just punch your your numbers into, and they will actually calculate your training zones for you. So, what are the benefits? Once you've uh, gone out, you've done your test, you've got your um, you've got all your training zones set. Whether you're using uh, Coggin or Freel or whatever the the preferred method of yours is, what are the benefits? Why are we doing it? As I, as I touched on earlier, most people when they're training are generally training too hard when they should be training easy, and not hard enough when they're training hard. So this is a great way to physiologically regulate or have a really accurate understanding of your effort at that time. You know, there are times and places where using rate of perceived effort is great. Going for a coffee ride, you don't need to make sure that you're riding your coffee ride at 120 watts and a heart rate of uh, 112 or whatever. It doesn't matter. Go out, ride and enjoy yourself. <laughs> but there are plenty of times as you're getting, particularly as you're getting closer to races where you need to encourage recovery so your easy needs to be really easy so you can hit those higher efforts whether it's vo2 max or, or lactate threshold work which are quite uncomfortable but really getting the benefit the real absolute benefit of those sessions by making sure you're hitting those targets in those numbers now there's different ways of using them as well so we'll we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later Another really, really important piece of this puzzle with using training zones and, and race is racing. So understanding what effort you can maintain for how long is a great way to have a successful race. Triathletes in particular, a lot of, and to a lesser extent runners, generally go too hard on the bike and then they suffer on the run. Runners generally go out too fast. They don't have the confidence to back themselves and they go out too hard because everyone takes off and they find the back end of their racing is struggling. So if you know what you can maintain, ha happily maintain, over 10Ks, you're more comfortable in going out and letting those people go. And as they do what you might have used to have done, they come back to you. With that comes confidence. Big, strong finishes. Really, really, really important. As I was just about to uh, touch on earlier there's a few different things that we use and we use them at different times and sometimes we use them in, in combination so probably the most common way of, of using heart of training zones is used is probably heart rate or pace both have benefits in certain situations over others we like to do a really easy endurance work particularly running and particularly for new athletes or people early in a training block with heart rate it's a physiological response to the effort that you're putting in so it's an what we would call an output metric. You put an effort in, out, output is speed, so how fast you're running, and what your heart rate does, so it's reacting. When you're running using it, you know, if you've got, you want to do some nice long endurance runs, what you'll, you'll find is you, you've set your heart rate and, and off you go, you'll find they should be should be pretty easy. You should probably, if, you're, if your aerobic fitness is, is about right, you're doing an effort that's, or a length of time that's commensurate to your current fitness, they should feel pretty easy and using that is a fantastic way of controlling it. it does get affected heart rate things such as dehydration temperature caffeine etc so if you go out and do a run on a really hot day at say 140 beats per minute you'll find it should be slower on the, than the same run on a, on a nice cool fresh day perfectly normal physiological response to the heat your body's trying to remove heat from the body to keep its body temperature in check your heart rate's going to elevate if you same as if you get dehydrated your heart rate is going to get elevated because once again it's trying to cool trying to hydrate yourself so just keep that in mind other sessions when we get closer to racing we're looking at working more on input metrics so efforts such as power and pace is our is our main target um, things such as you know doing a tempo run we like we prefer to do most of those with um, with a pace setting. You know, we know pretty much what someone's going to run for their 10k, for their half marathon, their their marathon, whatever. So we like to use pace as a really good marker, and um, so it helps them dial in that pace over time as well. 
power, same deal. We find just making sure you're hitting that number nice and high. So, you know, you, you might say normally with an F, uh, an RPE, sorry, rate of perceived effort um, session, you might be just not getting there that day, but you don't know. You, you just think you're doing it. And there's a million reasons why you may or may not be hitting that number. So make sure, like when you're using power, it just really gets you dialed in uh, for those on the bike. Swimming's a little bit different because obviously most of us can't see a clock, we can't test our heart rate, so most of that is RPE. Um, but, ha- but understanding what your threshold is, so your ability to um, swim basically essentially what a kilometre would take you, um, is a great way of understanding your effort uh, against certain distances, you know, endurance work versus tempo work, etc., etc. Same deal. But um, it is, swimming really does come down to RPE and understanding your effort internally. So that's a, a, where we would use a lot of um, RPE. Or we'd set someone a, 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 a pace to try and hit and then through them learning their, their RPE or understanding their RPE, they'll generally get closer and closer and closer to, to that mark. So essentially, they're, they're, the, they're the benefits. Why, why, do we use, why do we use training, uh, training zones? Control limit and target your physiological effort and load so it allows us to make sure that your load is correct for you at that time and making sure that your total load across the block we don't exceed anything that's too extreme and um, causing burnout fatigue injury sickness etc 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 so there you have it team a real quick guide at uh, using training zones so what are the important parts one Test it. Go out there, do your park run, do your 20 minute functional threshold, all out power test. You know, it is better to do those on a trainer, but you can do them on a road or uh, like an enclosed crit track or something like that. Something where you can be consistently working hard and you don't have to worry about stopping and starting. So that's tip number one or step number one. Step number two, use, use a protocol, whether it's Dr. Andy Coggins. Joe Freel, etc. Find one that works for you. Look, if you if you want my preference, I'd probably lean towards uh, Dr. Andy Coggan. I find that this is just personal experience. The endurance side of it is probably a bit more accurate uh, or a bit closer to the mark than Joe Freel. So that's why we just lean towards that a little bit. But you know, uh, any of those is going to be a hell of a lot better than than not using any of them at all. Once you've, once you've done that, use it. Make sure your sessions are targeted and trust them. Trust yourself to, to nail those efforts. You'll know when you'll need to retest. All of a sudden, those efforts at threshold, lactate threshold, which were hard and um, you know even for short efforts become easier and easier and easier, and you see, say, your heart rate dropping for the same pace, you might be ready to go do another test. Go and do another one, see where you're at. What you'll generally find is if your training is correct, your heart rate will stay the same. It won't change generally too much. Um, well, in new, newer athletes, but most of the time your heart rate will, will stay pretty similar with your training zones, but your pace and all your power will improve. So that means you're definitely definitely on track with your training, so you keep keep that up. Um, yeah, don't forget to retest. It's, it's really, really important and uh, adding that into your training. What we'll do is we'll put up on the website www.com getcoached.com later today we'll put in uh, a couple of couple of charts there that so you can see the different training zones that uh, Coggan and Joe Frill use just so you can have a look at them plenty of calculators out or you can take a uh, take a calculator out there and, and, and do it yourself if you're using something like training peaks uh, as your sort of performance platform or your tracking platform it does allow you to put your uh, numbers in there and gives you a choice of which calculation me- method you use so you go and go ahead and, and use those so make sure guys that you're um, using them being smart with it understand the difference between pace power heart rate and etc and the best times to use what endurance work we generally like heart rate most of the time more quality work we generally use that pace and power to make sure we hit those numbers and see what the body does in response Make sure you under, learn, learn how that affects your racing. Where does my power, pace and heart rate fit into racing and what affects it? Temperature, obviously elevation, nutrition, etc, etc, etc. Sorry, just went blank there, of course. <laughs> so if you've, got any, uh, if you've got any questions, make sure you hit us up. 
down there somewhere, fire us away some questions. If you are listening to this or watching this on YouTube, hit the like button down there again. Hit the subscribe button; that'd be great. If you're sharing this on, if you're watching this on Facebook, uh, it'd be great. Share it with your friends and family, and um, hopefully they can get something out of that. Make sure you check us out at getcoach.com on Instagram and Twitter, and of course, you've, hopefully you've you've seen this on Facebook. And check out all that we have at getcoached.com. All right, guys, I'm Coach Kef. Thank you for joining me again this week, and uh, we'll be back in a, in a week or so with another episode of Get Coach. Cheers.